Have you ever wondered how undo and redo is implemented in applications? Let's look at an algorithm for that. It's quite simple. Let's draw this out with ASCII art. Here's the timeline, it goes forward. And let's draw the state changes in an application. State change is one of add, edit, delete operations. Here are some state changes on the timeline. Now, as you can probably guess from here, when you undo, we go back to the previous state. When you redo, we go forward in the list. So naturally, the data structure we should use is a linked list. Now let's drill down a bit more. We want to save state just before the change happens. Let's mark it on the timeline. Let's write down what we know so far. Save state from fresh has these steps. Serialize the state, add to the change set list, increment the index. Let's visualize the index in our timeline as well. And now let's look at undo. Imagine we want to undo at this point. What this means is we want to get to the previous state here. The index should be decremented. Now at this point, we have a state change we haven't saved in our list yet. So that has to be saved before we jump back. Otherwise we will lose it in case we want to come back with a redo. To help us do this properly, we could maintain a variable that says if there are unsaved changes. This is called a dirty bit, or here, is dirty variable. So we can draw that in our timeline as well. Let's add this scenario to our algorithm. Check if the is dirty is true and save the state if so, and then decrement the index. This is because the save state increments the index. And then as usual, we restore the state at the index. Let's go over this again. In this chart, we are at index four after the dirty save, and we want to get to the element at index two which means double decrement should happen. Now pay attention here. If the user presses undo again, there are no unsaved changes and we should only decrement once. We should reset the dirty bit here so the above algorithm is correct. Now let's look at the redo case. This is quite simple. On redo, we should go forward in our list. So the index should be incremented. On undo redo operations, we should make sure that the index is in the range. The range is from zero to the length of the change list. Okay, so far so good. But there's another case uh, that we need to consider. That's when we do an undo operation and then start adding changes from there on, which means we should remove the change from the current index to the end of the list. This is because when the user adds changes after going back, they are indicating the previous changes are not needed. So let's write those steps as well. Okay, enough ASCII art, show me the code. Here's a class that implements all that. As you can see, it is pretty small. This is in Dart and in a Flutter project. We have a list of strings you can serialize your state to a JSON string, and we maintain an index. Let me put the algorithm side by side. Save string is here. Undo is simply as described in the algorithm, apart from the checking for the dirty bit. That's because it is done in the app. Redo is here. Increment the index and clamp and return the state. And let's look how this is used. This is done in my widget class. Here are two function calls for the undo and redo. Dirty bit is maintained and checked here. And note the corresponding algorithm we created earlier. So here's a place where a state change happens. This function is delete node and here the state is about to change. Before that, I'm saving the state and setting the dirty bit to true. 
because a change is about to happen. Save state function looks like this. We serialize the node state to JSON and call save on change set. Now let me show you it in action. This is the app I've been working on for a few weeks now. Let's make some changes. I'm going to add some nodes Now I'm going to undo and redo. Great, that works. Now let's look at a more realistic case where I undo and then do a change. Great, undo redo works as expected. Okay, that's it for this video. As usual, if you like what I create, like, share and subscribe to the channel. I live stream every Saturday at 10 a.m. GMT on Twitch. See the description for details if you'd like to see me live code. Thanks for watching and see you next time.